Thank you, Sandy. Hello, everyone. As Sandy said, my name is Ahmed, and I'm the lead data science architect at ACCO. And today, I'm going to share my journey about ACCO's trans digital transformation with help of AWS. So ACCO is a $9.4 billion American agricultural equipment manufacturer. And we provide agriculture solutions to farmers worldwide. We provide a wide range of solutions across many brands, across different countries, at different price points, and different technical levels. You may have heard of some of our most common brands. We have Fant, we have Massey Ferguson, and Volta, to name a few. We also have an IoT platform called Fuse that we use to collect and process telemetry and agronomy data. We have also made recent inroads into agrotech expansion through acquisitions, and a notable one there is precision planting, where, which uses technology and geospatial mapping to deliver precise planting schedules to farmers around the world. So professional farm machinery and technology has long been realized as the next step in evolution towards smart farming, boosting agriculture productivity, as well as reducing post-harvest waste. To enable this, ACCO has started embracing capabilities of the cloud to deliver better, insi better insights to customers about the machine performance, about maintenance needs, and other things. To start off this, ACCO started a digital transformation journey, DCX, where we started digitizing our company's solutions, and we started building applications such as customer portal, custom equipment configurator, e-commerce engines, data management initiatives, among others. And as we started building these, we realized that we needed analytics for all of these. What we also realized at the same time was we did not have a dedicated place to do analytics. And that led to the creation of the data science platform. So today I'm here to share some of the many successes that we have had in migrating to AWS, specifically around analytics and machine learning. So why did we build the platform? Well, first of all, we needed our product managers, our business leaders, to have a shorter lead time from when they came up with a use case to the time they actually put it in production and generate value. Secondly, we wanted our data scientists, who, by the way, are the most valuable commodity, the most valuable resource in a company, to focus more on analytics in terms of building the right algorithms to, to improve our company's performance, and less on focusing on how to deploy them, how to scalably integrate them, and those kind of things. And therefore, we wanted our data scientists to be focused on analytics. Thirdly, we also wanted to build a self-service data lake, which our solution leaders in the organization can use to build digital applications on top of them and make them available both internally as well as externally to our customers, to our farmers, and to our dealers. As you can imagine, when you build such an, a big platform, you come up with many challenges, and we did too. We had challenges regarding data availability and quality. We had challenges regarding GDPR compliance for our business units out there in Europe. We had challenges in technical skill sets gap, both regarding cloud as well as ML and AI. And finally, we also needed to overcome a mindset change from going from data warehouse, relational BI, traditional, to big data, cloud native architecture. Moving to the AWS really helped us there. Using AWS, we were able to achieve agility and speed. We were able to use, we were able to use and start the services that come out of the box from AWS and then customize them for our specific need. We were able to achieve easy deployments using services such as Amazon SageMaker and AWS Fargate to, deploy these, to build and deploy these models on the cloud. And finally, we were able to strike a really nice balance between cost and performance by choosing among the right set of solutions in the AWS tech stack for every functionality. So here on the right, I show you a snapshot of the range of services that we use in the platform. And this is just a snapshot, doesn't cover all the services. 
So as you can see, we use toy services like S3 and Glacier to using ML services such as EMR and SageMaker to using <coughs> uh, ETL services such as Glue to serverless ones such as Lambda and Step Functions. So this is how the ML platform looks like. So while you take a minute to digest this, I'm just going to touch on a few important points that help us deliver on that agility and speak that we talked about. We use AWS spec step functions to be able to orchestrate our workloads, to create our ETL engines, and to create a state machine of sort that allows us to track the progress of data as it gets transformed to the different tiers from a raw data lake to a standardized to a data store. Step functions also help us to troubleshoot in case of any issues arise, and it also retries in case of failures. For our machine learning, we use SageMaker. Now, SageMaker was a great tool for us. It has built-in Jupyter notebooks that allows data scientists to write their code. It also has capabilities to deploy in the cloud using Fargate or SageMaker hosting services as well as you can use <coughs> SageMaker to integrate with Git, as well as S3 through Boto packages. And finally, we used S3 and Athena and the Glue catalog to replace the functionality of database without the overhead of database management. And those three key functionalities help us to deliver our solution pretty quickly and in a very scalable manner. So now that we that I showed you the platform, and you would think that it would take a lot of time to build it. But no, we were able to build this entire platform in just 15 weeks. Now, I come from previously from an on-premises background in machine learning. And if you had asked this to me in the beginning of 2018, I would have said this was not possible. But we did it. 15 weeks, that's all it took. And now the platform has been used to execute many analytics and AI use cases. And three have already gone in production and another six are supposed to go in production by mid-2020. Beyond machine learning, we are also exploring different things. We are exploring building an agri uh, agriculture data lake, which houses both telemetry data as well as agronomy data. And we are exploring services such as Elasticsearch, managed Kafka clusters, IoT Greengrass, Forecast, Analytics, and among other services to build the data lake. Now the platform has been in production for about six months, and we have seen some really great successes. We have seen improved sales productivity through better lead generation through our platform, and those are achieved in terms of better timelines of when customers are going to buy the equipment, as well as what kind of equipment they are going to buy. We have generated a path recommendation engine that allows us upselling and cross-selling opportunities. And we have created predictive maintenance solutions that allows us to maximize our uptime of our equipment in the field. To summarize our digital journey, we hope to reap benefits for our customers and our farmers by providing them more options for managing and automating their fleet. For our dealers, by giving them an end-to-end, best-in-class application to manage their business better. And for ourselves, by learning more about our customers, our farmers, and our dealers, and driving, using that knowledge to drive our margins. So if I look back a year ago, I would not have imagined that I would have had this much of success. And I'm very happy to have shared this story with you. Okay. And I'm, I'm thankful for all of you to have been there and listened to my story. Thank you. Thank you.